Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at vertical circular motion and we're going to talk about the number of forces acting and the direction they're acting in and the resultant force. So these examples come from a vertical plane, meaning they are perpendicular to the Earth's surface. So let's say you're taking a rope and attaching a ball at the end of the rope and you're trying to rotate that uh, ball or sphere. So in that rotation and in that circular motion where the motion is a vertical, in a vertical plane, in different positions, you're going to see different amount of tension. You're going to see different amounts of centripetal force. As a result, this is called, this is called a non-uniform circular motion. It's called non-uniform circular motion. Why is it called non-uniform? Because I just said that the force keeps changing as the tension keeps changing and the direction that it acts towards it keeps changing. So let's start off with point, let's say one. And what's happening over here is this is at the topmost position. So let's say you're rotating a sphere and that sphere is right now is vertically in its maximum position, right? What's happening over there? In this case, there is tension. There is tension, which is going to act towards the center, towards your hand. So if you're rotating the string, that string is going to apply a force on the ball towards the center or towards your hand. So we know that the tension is acting downwards, the red one. Then you also have the weight, the weight of the sphere or ball. So in that case, in which direction will the weight uh, be pointed towards? Obviously towards the center, because, because you're vertically in the maximum position, right? So it points towards the center or towards the center of the earth, right? It's going to be perpendicular to the direction of Sorry, perpendicular to the surface of the earth. Why? Because it's in the maximum position at 1. If it would be, let's say, in this odd position, it won't be towards the center. Mg wouldn't be towards the center. This would be Mg and this would be perpendicular to the earth's surface. So, in this case, in this odd position, Mg would not be towards exactly towards the center. However, however, there would be a component of the weight acting towards the center, but we'll, we will be discussing about it later on. First of all, um, as I said, let's look at position one, where the tension is acting towards the center and uh, the weight is acting towards the center as well. Fair enough. So, what is a um, centripetal force? It is the total force acting towards the center of the circle. Fair enough. So we can call it F net. We can call it F net and say that the force towards the center is the sum of the weight and the tension in the string caused by the rotation. Right? So, this is applicable, this equation is applicable for the topmost position, the topmost position where uh, the sphere is in its maximum height, where the mg is pointing towards the center and the tension is pointing towards the center. Fair enough. So, if you put the uh, equation for a centripetal force, you get mv square by r is equal to mg by t1. If you remember, the formula for centripetal force is mv square by 
are. So we get equation 1 for position 1. Fair enough. Now look, let's look at um, another position which is the minimum height of the ball. Let's see. It's vertically down and it's at its lowest point. Right? It's at its lowest point which is position let's say 3. What's happening over here? There is tension. But in this case, notice that the tension is upwards from the perspective of the ball. In this case, from the perspective of the ball, it was downwards. However, when you uh, get up here or down there, you see that the tension is pulling it upwards, right? Now, the mg weight is always going to act downwards or towards the center of the earth. Therefore, you see a difference in direction. You see a difference in direction, which is mg is downwards and tension is upwards. So, which force is pointing towards the center? The tension. You can see the tension in the string is pulling it, uh, pulling it upwards. Therefore, if we want to write an equation, we can say that the net centripetal force or the net force is T2, which is the tension towards the center, minus mg, which is the weight. So you can say the tension minus mg gives you the centripetal force. Fair enough. So you're getting equation 2 where um, the centripetal force is the difference between tension and weight. Why? Because tension is pointing upwards towards the center and mg is pointing downwards. Fair enough. So if you rearrange it, you get an equation for the tension where Tension is the sum of centripetal force plus, plus the weight. So you've basically just rearranged it, taken mg to this side and you get the equation for T2 or tension at the lowest position. Now, for the signs, you can always consider uh, towards the center to be positive. Let's say for equation 1, I've taken towards the center as the positive direction and upwards as negative. Since both T1 and Mg were downwards, both of them were positive. In this case, in the third case or the third uh, position, I've taken upwards as the positive, positive and uh, downwards as negative. Why? Because the center, the center will be reached by the upwards direction of the upwards arrow. Therefore, if we take mg, that points downwards or away from the center. Which is why we are giving it a minus or negative sign. Therefore, when you write the equation, you can see in front of mg there is a minus sign. Because that is pointing away from the center. So, there's nothing too complicated about the signs. If you just use logic, you can um, find the difference or the equation for the net force. Basically, you have to find the total amount of force that is pointing towards the center. That will give you the centripetal force. Okay. And then you can rearrange to get any other variable, be it tension, be it the weight. Alright. So, what do we know from these two examples, from these two positions? So if I uh, rearrange for position 1 and try to make T1 or tension the subject, if I make T1 the subject, you will see um, it is mv square by r minus mg. Alright? Now, if you observe uh, the two equations for tension, what do you see? You notice that 
Uh, for position one, the tension is less. Why? Because it is the difference between the centripetal force towards the center and the weight and the weight, which gives you a lower value for tension. Because you know, the mg is not changing. The weight is not changing in either of the cases. So, for T1 or tension 1, at the topmost position, you know the tension is least. Because the tension is given by the difference, not the sum, the difference between centripetal force and the weight. Why is that? Because both the tension and the weight contributes to the centripetal force. Therefore, the tension is not as great as position 2. Why? For position 2, notice that T2 is the only um, force providing you with centripetal force. Therefore, it is the sum of both centripetal force and mg. Because A is giving you the centripetal force, B is giving you, it, it has to counteract the weight. Therefore, you know, um, at position 2, or sorry, pos position 3, T2 is the sum of the centripetal force and the weight. You've clearly proven that using the equation. Therefore, you know, T2 is the sum of both the forces where T1 is the difference between both the forces. Now, if you don't want to think about it mathematically, you can think about it practically or theoretically. If you take a yo-yo and try to rotate it, you're going to see that if it's uh, at the lowest position, the tug you feel in your hand is going to be greater than when the uh, yo-yo is at the topmost position. When the yo-yo is at is at the topmost position, the tug you feel on your hand is going to be comparatively much less because the tension is much less. So you can experiment with it um, using any object and you're going to see that uh, when it's vertically down, the tug is far greater than, it, than when it is vertically up. So that is the first observation that T2 or the tension when the object is vertically below is greater than the tension when the object is vertically above. Okay, next. So, um, for observation 2, T1 or the tension at the topmost position, if, let's say I write the equation, T1 is equals to mv square ir minus mg. Now, you're told that you need to figure out the minimum speed for the object to be able to follow the circular path. Now, there must be a minimum speed for the object to be able to keep rotating. Now, what is that speed? That you need to figure out if you put in a value of zero as the tension. Why is that the case? Now, um, let's say it's at the topmost position, right? I'm taking another example. And this is the yo-yo, right? Or the ball. If this, at, this is at the topmost position and the tension is non-existent, or the speed you're rotating it at is so less that this object would just fall down. It would not complete an oscillation. It would fall down. You can experiment with it using a, a sphere or any, any object that if you try to rotate it with a much slower speed, it's not going to complete an entire oscillation. However, if you increase the speed, you're going to see that it keeps rotating. Now, what is the minimum speed? That is going to be figured out 
if you take this tension um, T to be 0. Why? Why uh, should T be 0? Because if T is 0, if T is 0, then due to inertia, due to inertia, even though it's not feeling a tug, even though it's not feeling a tug through the string, sorry, through the string, due to the motion, due to the initial motion of the sphere, and due to inertia, this object is going to continue to move in this direction. And once it moves away from the topmost position and takes this new position, it's going to start regaining the tension. Why? Because at that point, mg is, start, uh, mg is going to act in a different direction where this will have a component in this direction, mg, and a com component in this direction, which will contribute to the direction of tension. Now, since uh, the entire of mg is not acting towards the center, the tension, the value of tension, starts increasing. Therefore, we know, even if the tension at the topmost position is zero, it's not that the ball will stop moving. Therefore, we can say for the equation where T1 is equals to mv squared minus mg, even if we take the least possible value of tension, we can find out the minimum velocity required to to make sure the ball can continue to take the circular path. So mv squared by r is equals to mg. From this equation, you can find out, you can find out mm, yeah, v squared by r is g. So from this equation, you can find out that the minimum uh, velocity you need to make sure the ball can keep moving in the same circular track. Okay, so basically this is the formula V is equals to root RG using which you can find out the minimum velocity for the object to travel in a circular track in a vertical plane. So I hope I could explain why the tension can be zero. Because if you take tension to be zero and mg is going to stay constant, you cannot change that. And if you take tension to be zero, you will get the least possible value of velocity. Um, remember that for Fnet, um, the entire, the total amount of centripetal force is given by the sum of tension and the weight. Now, since you cannot change the weight, to get the minimum minimum speed for the object to continue to rotate in the motion, you need to change the tension. Now, if you take the tension to be zero, you will get the least possible value of least possible value of speed. Since on this side, since on this side, the tension is at its lowest value and mg is not going to change, you will get the least possible value for v square or velocity. If the tension was greater or greater than zero, let's say one, in that case, the value for minimum velocity or the value of velocity will increase. So the only possible case where you can get the value of velocity to be minimum is when you apply the tension to be zero. The velocity that you get from this equation, root rg, is um, the velocity that is needed to make sure that the vertical oscillation can take place without this speed. 
you won't be able to complete one entire oscillation. The speed needs to be equal or greater than this. Notice that in this equation, there is no va variable for mass. Therefore, therefore, mass does not matter for the minimum velocity. For the minimum velocity, what's going to be the factor is the radius and the value of gravitational constant or the value of gravity. Not gravitational constant, sorry. The value of gravity. So, you need to know the radius and the value of and the value of g which is 9.81 in this case with that you will know the minimum velocity for the object to travel in and this applies for all the cases even if it is 10 kgs or 100 grams the minimum velocity will remain the same all right so for max speed this was about minimum speed. Now for maximum speed, what can you do to find the maximum speed? Now, it doesn't matter how much you increase the speed or the force with which you're tugging the ball. It's not going to matter since if the string can withstand the force, uh, it's, it's going to... Uh, keep increasing its tension or the string is going to keep increasing its tension so until and unless the string breaks off or has a, an upper limit for tension it's not going to affect or have any sort of maximum speed so you can keep increasing until um, the string breaks off so the max tension or the max force that the string can withstand is going to give you the maximum possible speed that the ball can rotate with. So yeah, that's that's it for vertical circular motion. Next we can look into a bit more advanced equations for non-ideal positions on the vertical circle. Meaning it can be in this position, in this position and in this position. So how do we calculate values for those, for those odd positions?